Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of IC. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that you chose to join me today as we try to ra rescue April, who fell down a hole in this building that has been uh, partially destroyed by this huge, huge tree. Uh, so we have a choice right now, we have a choice to make. And if I'm honest, in between episodes, I didn't, I didn't consider my choices. <laughs> Um, yeah, I just started recording right away, and, um, <clears throat> okay, so they're arguing, I could say nothing, but, yeah, we're going to save her, uh, we're going to save her, that's for sure, we'll leave no one behind, and we also need to know more about what happened before going back to Morgan, yeah, that's a good point, I don't, I just don't want everyone to die covered in dust and bricks, maybe we can ask Morgan to give us some equipment. I'm not comfortable with the idea of leaving April here. For who knows how long. We are not leaving! He turns... So Carlos turns to the hole in the floor and screams to April. April! We are coming! Just stay safe! It's too dark down here! I can see where I am! All I can tell is that there are roots everywhere! You search the area for a passage leading below when you find some nearly intact stairs descending into the darkness. Ooh, that looks foreboding. Man, this... The building itself is huge. Look at the height of that of that of those walls right there you need to a proper source of light to proceed okay let's use the light torch that's what we keep them for you're able to proceed but descending isn't easy with all of those overgrown roots everywhere you notice a path already cut through the roots and decide to follow it since since it is the only passage not completely blocked by vegetation this is getting worse these rooms are almost completely overrun by this bloody tree. We still don't know where, where, uh, we still don't know why people have been disappearing around here. So keep your eyes open. The tree may not be our main concern right now. You advance into another room and you finally find something that may be related to the missing people. Two bodies lying on the ground. That is not a good sign. Let's inspect the bodies. The bodies may belong to the people that Morgan sent here, since they don't look like nomads. Someone or something crushed them to death, leaving them massively bruised and broken. Huh. Could that be an explosion? Maybe. The good thing is that some someone already cut a path for us. Yeah, yeah that's true. But what's that noise? Bats. I think those could have been bats. Hmm. You continue following the path that someone previously cut through the roots when your surroundings rapidly change. You enter a room where the roots are different. They are green and fresh and they seem to be to converge to a single point. <gasps> With your light you trace along, along the roots to the central point where they co converge and discover something most horrific. Some poor person has grown into, become one with the tree itself. Its shape is human, but it almost looks like some kind of hybrid between a plant and a person. The skin is green and hairless, it stands still with its head looking at the floor. Holy shit! For once I agree with you, what the fuck is this thing? Fang inspects this strange figure. Of all my travels around the, across this cursed world, I have never seen anything like this. I have seen some strange mutants in my life, but this is the strangest. Huh. Let's inspect, let's search the room first. You take a few steps around the room and eventually discover something. There are three more bodies, something strange is happening to them. They're dead like the others, but the roots of the plant are, are wrapping around the bodies, merging into them almost like the tree is absorbing the bodies into itself. Hmm. So could it be that this is the same... So this is a dead body that's been absorbed by the tree, perhaps? As you get closer, you can see that the creature is moving, but does not seem to notice you. The creature seems to react more when you shine the light at it, but it doesn't do much else. Ah, it's pro- mm, that's weird. Let's keep exploring this place. Guys, are we sure we want to go deeper? If that thing can move, maybe the whole tree can move. What if it was the tree that killed those people to feed them- to feed on them? It doesn't seem like it's feeding, it seems more like it's becoming one with them. We need to find April as soon as possible, then get the hell out of here. Let's go this way, there's an open passage. Eva pauses for a second. Careful, there's blood on the ground. 
You proceed deeper into the building's underground, eventually finding an area with fewer roots. You suddenly stop when you hear a woman's voice. It doesn't sound like April, and it comes from a path overrun by roots. You get closer and light the area. You see a woman likely suffering from food and water deprivation. It is hard to get a good look at her through the roots. Hey, can you help us? We're blocked inside this monstrosity. So, who are you? My name is Tanya, please help us. We're trapped here, I, I don't know if you've noticed, but the tree's alive and it's trapped us here. We've been stuck between the roots and walls for days. Tanya, maybe you should tell them why we're here. Yeah, fine, Morgan sent us, sent some of his men here and then he sent us to find out why they disappeared. I think he hired us because he didn't want to share the secrets of this place with other people from the Amur Nation. At first, we couldn't find anyone. We explored the place a bit and found the path through the roots. That's where we have discovered two bodies. I sent two of our group to drag the bodies out while we kept searching. We eventually found out one of Morgan's men is still alive, but there were branches and roots around his body. We tried to free him. They just pissed off the damn tree. Roots and branches came to life like some fucking nightmare. He began tearing through the flesh of some of some and trapping the rest of us here. It's been days. We're out of supplies. All our family either got killed here or maybe they just run away. Guys, you have no idea how happy I am to see you. Okay, yeah, we're, we were searching for you, and not because of Morgan, but because of the uh, wolf pack. Seriously? Then we'll have to talk about them once you manage to get us out of here. Yeah, okay, so... Oh, yeah, one of our group fell through the floor and on the upper levels. She should be around here somewhere. You see, I told you I heard, I hear, heard voices coming from the other side of the tree. Fine, but that doesn't change anything. Tanya turns to you again. TJ heard someone, but she must uh, she must be on the opposite side of the tree because the sound was very muffled. Huh, so what do we have to do? We are trapped between the ruins and the roots. You need to find a way to cut the roots or find a path that leads us that leads to one of the closed doors we can uh, see from here. The doors are big, red and metal, but we couldn't find a way to open them. Yeah, we'll find a way to get you out of there. Thank you, just... Just be careful, the tree may be may seem harmless, but this bastard has killed more people than you can imagine. Good luck, mates, and thank you for the help. You proceed further into the building, coming across an area with less vegetation that is easier to traverse. Carlos is really worried and keeps looking around, hoping to find his wife. April, where are you? Can you hear me? You search rooms after room until you reach another section completely overrun by roots and branches. Guys, I'm over here! You keep looking up, uh, you keep looking up, following the voice until you finally see April. She's in the distance, there she is, uh, protruding from the floor above you. We're coming, my love! Carlos seems to be quite relieved. This is not going to be easy. Look at our surroundings, this place is a death trap. The structure is weak, roots are everywhere, and by the look of those people getting absorbed into the tree, it's pissed. Caution must lead our feet. We don't want to provoke any hostile reaction. Yeah. Mm. Let's search for a different path leading to April. You walk around the area with the mo the areas with the most visitation, trying not to step on anything that may provoke the tree. It takes some time, but you finally manage to get it closer to April. Let's do it quick. Those things they're 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 moving more than before. I think the tree knows we are here. Sweetheart, do you think you can jump down there? Down here? I don't know, I'm scared, Carlos, it's so far down. There are some thin roots over here, if you throw me a machete, I, I can cut them and maybe find a, an easier way to cut, to, uh, to come down. Hmm, start cutting the tree. Yeah, the tree is dangerous, if you hurt it, we may have to face the consequences. All the people Morgan sent here die because of it. Are you serious? Yes, we need to be careful or we may be its next vi victims. We have no time to explain. We should go out here, get out of here as soon as possible. Yeah, jump down. If you get hurt, we'll manage. I do not want all your lives on my head, and I doubt you do either. It's too risky to provoke the tree. You haven't seen what what he can do. April takes a deep breath and closes her eyes for a second. Fine. I'm jumping down. I just hope you're right. April jumps down, but the height was too much, and she hits the ground with a brutal thud. One of her legs is twisted and bends out in a natural in an unnatural way. Ouch. Sorry. April skims in agony. My leg! I think I think it's broken. Carlos rushes to April's side and tries to help her to stand up. Come on, my love. Let's get out of here. You're safe now. 
We need to, we need to save those other pool souls. I'm not I'm not suggesting we kill we get killed for them. We just we should at least try. That's a great idea. April can sprint ahead of us <laughs> and let them know we'll we'll be right here, there, Jerome. Yeah, that's not necessary. Um. Yeah, we should at least try. I think if things get hard, we'll run away, but we need to make sure to make an honest attempt. Carlos looks at you for a moment before replying. Fine. But if it looks like it's about to get hairy, I'm grabbing April and taking our happy asses to the exit. Let's move. I feel that we don't have much time. The tree is waking up. A good reason to get out of here as soon as possible. Suddenly... Okay. I... Ah, uh, okay. I I think I shouldn't have wasted so much so much time looking for a, a path to April. That might have been a bad choice. Eh. Suddenly the ground begins to rumble and there is movement all around you. It seems that the tree finally woke up. Its roots its roots are shaking the entire building. This place is falling apart. We have to get out of here. Your group starts running, trying to go back the same way that brought you so deep into the building. Carlos struggles to help April walk while the plants come to life all around their feet. The surroundings are changing right before your eyes as the roots shift and move about. The tree is more aggressive now. Its roots reach out towards you and your companions. That is not good. Jerome's point Jerome points his finger at the passage you previously used to explore the building. It's now completely blocked by roots and rubble. This way! Eva starts running down a corridor that was previously hidden by the roots. Come on, let's go! You proceed through the corridor when suddenly you hear a female voice screaming. Tanya and TJ abruptly appear from around the corridor. What happened? Weren't you trapped? When the roots started to move, we were able to find a way out. Less running of the mouth, more running of the feet. I don't want to die under tons of bricks and concrete today. That way seems to be clear enough. Let's go there. After what seems like a lifetime of running among moving roots, clawing and grabbing at whatever they can reach, you finally see some stairs leading to the upper floor. Up there! They should be... They should, uh, they should lead us out of here. While you run to the stairs, you hear a scream coming from behind. You turn and see April trapped by roots, her legs and arms completely untangled in, entangled in them. Catalyst tries to help her, but the roots get the better of him. Wrap him around his bo wrap around his body and prevent him from freeing April or himself. Well, is that safe? Throwing an incendiary grenade on the vegetation behind April and Carlos. I think that. Yeah, I could choose one of them, but uh... well, if I had to choose, I'd choose April because Car April is wounded and Carlos is not. So, running for April would uh, provide, hopefully, provide uh, the best chance for both of them getting out. But I doubt Carlos would get out. So, let's throw an incendiary grenade and see what happens. Mobalaji gives you a puzzled look. <laughs> oh, no kidding. As you set fire to the rag on the incendiary... Uh, to the rag on the incendiary, gr incendiary grenade. Okay, so the incendiary grenade has a rag. I didn't know about that. I didn't know that. Anyway, what the hell?! The grenade lands behind your trapped companions and the burst of fire engulfs all the roots caught in the blast as they recall you the loyals, April and Carlos to escape from their deadly grip. Come on, let's get out of here! The group moves without haste. Without haste? And finally reach the stairs. Without haste? Seriously? Or with haste? Anyway, the group is able to make it up a few floors before being stopped by a massive hole that occupies the space where the stairs were supposed to be. Your group tries to find a way around. Thankfully, the upper floor seems to be safer since there is less vegetation trying to kill you. Demetra points her finger to the opposite side of the room. There! You turn and see the stairs that allowed you to go deep into the building. You run to reach them, but suddenly the floor trembles and several roots emerge from the, from the ground. After some struggle, you're able to reach the stairs, but when you look back, you see Carlos get pulled away from April by roots around his foot. He falls to the ground as they pull him in. Man, that guy is not lucky today. April falls without Carlos to support her leg and starts screaming, Help him! Please help him! But it's too late. God damn it. They were too far behind. While you run towards Carlos, you see the roots... Crush his body with incredible strength. Oh, Carlos. No! No! April screams through her tears while Dimitri and Jerome drag her away. April's gone. April, he's gone. We have to go. Jerome keeps dragging April's body across the ground as he screams at the sight of his dismembered body, of the dismembered body of her husband. Man. Shit. Let's get out of here. Mobilaji turns and starts running away along with you and the others. 
The entire building trembles intensely. The breeze fall all around you as you climb the stairs, desperately trying to escape. You finally reach the ground floor and run with all your might until you manage to get out of the to get out and away from the building. Jerome's body almost gives out as he collapses to the ground. He struggles to sit upright, saying nothing. He just looks at you with a desperate face and shakes his head. April keeps crying as she lays on the ground. Dimitra and Eva are near her, trying to to be supportive, but she is too she is too lost in her own grief to notice them. I cannot apologize enough for our, for what happened in there. We lost all of our companions. It was horrible. DJ look, looks at Tanya. Now what? I think we should should go back to Morgan before doing anything else. At least we'll get what we came here for. The dirty pig sent us in a deadly trap. Yeah. Yeah, but it did tell us not to go in there. Man. Poor Carlos. We're out now. Mind telling us what we know about the wolf pack and why you are chasing them? We have our reasons. What about you? Why are you interested in them? We've been after them since the day they took some of our friends. Then let us all go to Morgan. We will talk again about the wolf pack once the pig gives us the information that cost us our entire family. How many people were traveling with you? We were nine, and now there's only two of us. We lost our friends, our family. We have nothing now. There were people I killed, uh, there were people I liked and people I didn't, but I never wanted to see any of them dead. Yeah, I don't think I'll ever miss that annoying prick of Devon, 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 whatever. Eh. So you don't really seem to like Morgan. He was so secretive about this mission. He gave us no info and sent us into a certain death. And for what? If I'd known that we would have uh, to fight against a giant mutant tree, I would have brought something to burn it down. So no, I don't really like Morgan. Screw him and screw his fucking secrets. Hopefully I'll never have to deal with him that with that bastard ever again. Hmm. Okay, we'll leave this place and go straight to the ammo nation. The group prepares to travel while April still suddenly grieves her dead husband. It seems impossible to talk with her right now. Yeah, no kidding. You pack your things and go back to out onto the white wasteland. Next stop, the ammo nation. Uh. Oh, whoa, 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 wait. I was moving my map. Okay. There's nothing to the north. This looks like the sea. Is it the sea? Nah, I don't think so. Is it? Nah. Uh, but I would like to visit that thing right there. But let's not do that for right now. Let's just uh, go this way. Make sure I can hunt. Okay, got another scavenging opportunity right here. And uh, I got a frying pan and a Nokia phone. Unfortunately, no hunting opportunity for me right there. Ammunition, let's... Um, <clears throat> so where was Morgan? Trader? I think it was right here. Uh, no, it wasn't this guy. I don't think it was this guy. Okay, so let's make sure that I have all that I need. Uh, how many grappling hooks do I have? Only two? Let's bring, uh, let's bring another one. Bring this one. Uh, yeah, might as well bring that one. Uh, why not? Uh, let's bring one of these. <clears throat> now let's sell some of our stuff. So, explosives, a knife. I'm gonna keep all of that. And got a soap. Sell this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I'm gonna sell all this. I'm gonna sell all of this as well. Okay, good. So, that's that, I guess. So let's leave, let's go to the local tavern, uh, yeah, 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 you enter into the dungeon, yeah, yeah, whatever. Uh, let's talk to, so who was Morgan, was this, this, oh yes, you finally came back, I was starting to get worried. Morgan is sitting with a glass of alcohol in his hands. You're, you asshole, my whole family got killed in that thing, you sent us in, in there to die. Whoa, calm your tits, people that talk to me like that don't stay alive for long. He points at the guards spread all around the club, all of them are looking at <laughs> Tanya. Yeah, Tanya looks around and then she tries to contain her rage. You sent us to die, you refuse to tell us anything about the place. And the reason is quite simple. If I have to rely on nomads like you instead of using my men, it's because I want to keep things secret to some people. People living around here. So, if I were able to tell more about the job, I wouldn't need it. I wouldn't have needed you for the job. No job, no reward, and you, wouldn't, you would uh, be still looking for someone to tell you what you need to know. Tanya turns to you. 
You talk with this idiot, otherwise things will end badly. She walks away and takes the stairs to leave. Morgan is now looking at you. So, will you tell me what happened in there? I will, but uh, Tan is right. Yeah, Tan is right. You sent us in there to die. You could at least have warned us that this was the dangerous job. Why? Did you ever get a simple job? Is anything easy or safe when you are well, when you are out there? Now, will you tell me what what the hell happened? Um, <clears throat> the tree can partially move and defend itself. It killed your team and then proceeded to absorb their bodies. Morgan looks at you with his eyes wide open. Well, that is some fucked up stuff right there. Do you think that it could be possible to study that tree without getting people killed? Hmm. Well, the tree can move from its position, but if you are careful, you can do something to it. Just send smarter people next time. Too bad smart people are hard to find. Anyway, I'll consider putting a better equipped team onto it. I mean, you saw the thing. If, if there's any chance to replicate that growth out, out on other plants, someone could produce a lot of food doing so. Anyway, you did your job and I owe you a fine reward. First, take some bullets. I understand that it was more dangerous than I expected. Then I'll tell you who the guy is who gave all that nice equipment to the wolf pack. I think it's called Boris and I know where you can find him. Let me show you on a place on your map. Here, the guy lives under, lives hidden into nothing around this place. Uh, you need to find a farmhouse painted in red. They'll go there hoping to find the same stuff that he gave to the wolf pack. He's smart and the only time I met him he had nothing with him. Well, that's all. Now, if you excuse me, there are people I need to speak to. For the first time, you see Morgan standing on his feet while he walks away. Let's go find Tanya. She'd like to know. Uh, she'd like to know about what he said. You go out of the dungeon and see Tanya that is walking towards you. Did he tell you something useful? Um, yes, he did. We have the location of a man who can lead us to the wolf pack. Would you mind if DJ and I join you in our in this journey? We have the same goal and we will accept you as a leader, as tradition dictates. Please, think about it before answering. We are only two, we can survive on our own, but we can help you. We've been through a lot. Oh yeah, well, you, you can say that we are experienced in the arts of surviving on the White Low Iceland. Yeah, I guess... Yeah, I guess... I don't know what their objective is, though, but I'm kind of curious to learn about that. Yeah, you can come with us. Thank you very much. Those bastards won't know what hit them. Okay, well, you want to kill them, so that's fine. As long as your objective aligns with mine, that's all fine. So let's go back to the plaza and let's get a hell out of here because I want to. I want to talk to you guys. So we got ten. Oh, by the way, let me see my health situation. Everything's good. That's perfect. Mine is good as well. I got lots of experience though, so that's very good. Um, I could improve speechcraft. Let's go with that. One of those. Let's improve hunting, no. Scavenging, ah, whatever. Bow, let's go with that. Uh, let's go with another one of those. And then, I guess one of these couldn't hurt too much. And, uh, exploration would be cool. Let's go with exploration. Eh, let's go with that. Uh, I feel I'm spreading around things a little bit too much, but, uh, Maybe, maybe I'll, I'll change my strategy in the future, who knows. But anyway, we got a couple of new party members, and we got another objective right there. And it's our only objective, it's where Boris lives. So I'm gonna take this route, visit that little house right there. But first, I'm gonna speak with Tanya. Are you here to help a little chat? Yeah, I'd like to know more about you and what, did, uh, and what uh, you did before joining us. A wise move, you always need to know as much as possible about the people traveling with you. I was born in a settlement, but when I was old enough, I joined some other young people and left the settlement to find another place to live. She smiles slightly. We were so young and foolish, so full of hopes and good purposes. But as you can see, I'm still living as a nomad. We never found a new home. The more I traveled with them, the more I realized how unfit we were. We lived in a settlement for most of our lives. We couldn't just leave and pretend to be experienced nomads. One day we got attacked by some raiders and most of us died in the battle. That day I decided to stand up to take the burden of leadership. You know how it works, people die, people run away, other people join you. For more than 15 years I managed to keep me uh, and my people alive. Well, some people died, but the White Wasteland is a dangerous place and you can save everyone despite your efforts. 
Then one day, the, those wolf pack mercenaries attacked some of my people while they were waiting for me and the, the other hunters to come back. I started to lose control. I wanted to let it go, but everyone wanted to chase them and get revenge. There are only three, that's what they said. I saw it coming and... As you say, as you saw the day we met, chasing people like that ended in death. But at the end of the day, it's my fault. I was their leader. I had to stop them from doing something so stupid. I will always blame myself for what happened, even if we faced something unbelievable. Hmm. Well, I don't. Yeah, I can't. I can't. I can't reply to that. Uh, so what? What can you tell me of Morgan? A black-hearted bastard, and that describes him perfectly. I heard a lot about him and discovered that what I heard was mostly the truth. Greedy, smart, obsessed with, po with power. In some ways, I respect him. He takes what he wants and allows no one to get in his way. Instead of crying or waiting, he acts. Huh. Yeah, that's true. What about DJ? Did you two know each other from before? Yeah, I guess you can say that. We traveled together, he was in my family. We never really had a real talk until we got trapped in the tree building. A decent folk. Uh, with the bad habit of making bad jokes in bad situations. But it's an awesome shot, so you can easily tolerate some childish, side, childish jokes. And despite his attitude, he's actually a reliable guy. He never let me down, never even tried to take over. Hmm. Okay, cool. I feel they ha they trust each other, at least she trusts him, so that's a good thing. Uh, yeah, let's go back to our favorite activity, walking. Nah, not before I, I speak with TJ. TJ smiles and crosses his arms. How can I help you? Tell me more about you and your past. Well, what to say? I'm a survivor, like guns, I like shooting bad things with my guns, and that's pretty much all I had to say about me. Well, we all live in the same boring cold world. I think already I think you already know what it is like to live in the in it. My life wasn't really different from anyone else's. What about Tanya? Do you two know each other from a long time? Uh, nearly four years, but we never really had a talk until we found ourselves trapped under a giant tree. We were in a big family, so I had my friends, she had, well, no friends, actually. She liked to be an undisputed leader. Hard to have friends with such attitude. Huh. Morgan, what do you think about him? Oh, you mean the nice person that sent us to die because of a mutant tree? Uh, you couldn't say that I literally love the guy. I mean, you tried to kill me and I and all my friends. I mean, it's, it's just... It's nothing personal. <laughs> I was thinking about making a big, nice statue of him made of snow. But then I thought, what material really reflect Morgan's greatness? And I started collecting mammoth stung. Yeah, just picture it. A massive statue made of shit reflecting the beauty and grace of such a great man. A small tribute to his infinite glory. So yeah, you could say that as my best friend and I'd really want to put a bullet in his head. <laughs> I guess Tani was right about the bad jokes. Um, yeah, whatever. Let's, uh, we're done for now. Come back when you, when, uh, to me when you want. Shedding is better than just walking. Yeah, sh shedding is always better than just walking. Uh, so let's just walk for now. Let's hunt. No hunting opportunity. Man. Okay, whatever. Uh, let's go there. And uh, is that gonna be just a scavenging, scavenging spot? There it is. There it is. Okay, let's hunt. Ooh. Uh, let's use bows. There it is. Let's use a gun. You kill the deer and get some food and some fur. That's always cool. And let's see what this is all about. Not much. Find an abandoned house. While looting the area for anything useful, you find a big chest, but it's locked. Well, uh, let's use a crowbar to pry it open. Ooh! Heavy pistol. That's cool. Is that a desert eagle? Got Also got food, got fuel, and got medicine, so that's pretty good. That is pretty good. But anyway, I think that's about it for this episode. I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Icy. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, feel free to leave a comment, like the video, but above all, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye!